Does your stomach flash you SOS signals after you've eaten? Unpleasant symptoms of indigestion due to gastric hyperacidity mean you need real help. Get it with Bisodol mints. They give prompt relief from the discomfort of excess gastric acidity. Easy to take Bisodol mints are only 25 cents at all druggists. Get some tonight. Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, is on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel's Toothpaste presents Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction and one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday night from 7.30 to 8 Eastern Wartime, the famous old investigator will take from his file and bring to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. When you buy Colonel's toothpaste, you get four big advantages. One, flavor. It's peppy, minty, refreshing. Two, foam. It's bubbly, busy, alive. Three, feel. It's soft, safe, non-abrasive. Four, results. It helps brush your teeth immaculately clean. Who could ask for anything more? Don't wait. Ask for Colonos, a high-polishing toothpaste. That's spelled K-O-L-Y-N-O-S. Colonos Toothpaste. <laughs> And now, Mr. Keen, tracer of lost persons, who tonight brings us the case of the Leaping Dog, a strange and baffling story that began on a street corner in New York near the tracer's office. There was a modest little apartment house on the corner, and outside, a large Belgian shepherd dog stood looking up at a ground floor window and baying unhappily. From time to time, the dog would leap with all his strength toward that closed window, only to fall back hour after hour. Of course, it attracted attention from many who passed by, and eventually from Mr. Keene and his assistant, Mike Clancy, as they were walking back to their office from lunch. Mike? Yes, Mr. Keene? Look on the corner there. That dog is still there. Oh, sure enough. The leaping dog. There he goes again, still jumping and still falling back. Poor fellow. So handsome and pathetic. <laughs> nice set of teeth, too. Let's have a chat with him. Yesterday, I... Saw him almost put his teeth into one fellow who tried to have a chat. Boy, it was a close shave. Well, he's, he's looking over this way. Sure, here he comes. <laughs> Gentle as a lamb. Say, boss, won't you just tell him now? That I like him, that's all. <laughs> here you are, young fellow. Oh, what's the trouble? Locked out? Somebody forget you? No color on him, no identification. Oh. Something you're trying to tell me, eh? Well, let's go inside and see what we can find out. Inside? Boss, you've got a year's work waiting for you at the office as it is. It'll only take a moment, Mike. Let's ask those two men standing there in front of the doorway. Maybe they can give us some information. Hm. Now we're working for a dog. Come along, young fellow. <laughs> I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Yeah, what do you want? I wonder if you've noticed this dog leaping up at that window. What dog? This Belgian shepherd, right here. Never saw him in my life. Neither did I. Been out here all morning and yesterday, too. We never saw him in our life. Okay, okay. Here, Mike. Let's go through this door. <laughs> the dog's trotting along like he knew you all his life, boss. It's a walk-up apartment. And there goes the dog, heading for that first door. And that's where he probably lives. Ring the doorbell, Mike. No luck. See what's down there on the doormat. Oh, newspapers, a pile of them. Well, let's have a look at the dates. Here, here you are, sir. Been lying here as far back as five days. <coughs> hey, boss, you think somebody's dead inside the apartment? Died sudden like maybe, or committed suicide? Could be. Let's call the cops. No, no, before we go that far, let's try the easy way. 
We'll ring the bell of the neighbor next door. Okay, sir. Yes? Something you want? I beg your pardon, Mrs... Uh, Briggs is my name. Mrs. Briggs, I... I happen to notice this dog out on the street. Oh, and... sure, that's Tony. Tony, eh? I gather he belongs in that apartment next door. Yes, to the old couple, Mr. and Mrs. Godwin. Well, I rang their bell and there was no answer. They just went away. Well, you're sure? Yes, on a vacation, I guess. I saw them get into a taxi last Saturday, it was. Both of them, with the dog and a couple of suitcases. They did take the dog with them. Huh? Oh, yes. Then all of a sudden, Tony showed up here yesterday. I tried to coax him inside to give him some food, but he just kept growling. Very strange. Yes, I was wondering. Oh, Mrs. Briggs, you wouldn't by any chance remember what kind of a taxi they went away in. No. I happened to be standing by my window when I saw Mr. Godwin at the curb shouting for the taxi. They got in, all of them, and went away. If I may trouble you with one more question, can you tell me anything about what Mr. Godwin does for a living? He's retired, I guess. They moved in here about six months ago, and they never went outside their apartment much, except to walk the dog. Oh, oh, excuse me, I've something on the stove cooking oh, now. Go right and... ahead and take care of it. Thank you very much, Mrs. Briggs, and goodbye. Goodbye. Well, boss? Mike, scribble a little note and shove it under the door. Say we've taken Tony to the office. To the office? Do as I say, please, Mike. Okay, okay. Dear Mr. Godwin, if you are looking for your dog... Poor fellow. You're very upset. And so am I, Tony. There's something about this situation I just don't like. Well, you come back to the office and we'll fix you a bite to eat. Do a little thinking about this funny business. Okay, Mr. Keene, I put the note under the door. Let's get along, Mike. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Come on, Skinner, out of the way. Okay, okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Here, Tony, come along. This way. Hey, Skinner. Yeah, Harvey? Did you hear what name that Irishman was calling the old guy before? Sure, Mr. Keene. Well, there's an investigator by that name. Famous. I've seen his pictures in the paper. Me too. That's the guy. What makes him come snooping around here? Just one of those accidents. His office is around here. I don't like it, Skinner. I better keep an eye on the old guy. Well, boss, two days gone by and you're still hanging on to this dog. You take him home every night, you bring him back in the morning and keep him by your desk. He's becoming a me regular member of the staff. Not a bad idea, Mike. Why don't you turn him over to a cop? What are you up to anyhow? Mike, I'm convinced this isn't any ordinary case of a stray dog. I don't believe the Godwins went off on a vacation. Why not, sir? They're obviously people in modest circumstances. If they'd gone off on a vacation, the first thing they'd have done would have been to stop the daily newspaper. Maybe so, but... Uh... Something tells me the Godwins left in a hurry, in a panic. They were running away from something. Why should two old people run away? I don't know, but I'd certainly like to find out. There's still no answer to our note. We haven't got a thing to go on. Just one clue. They left in a taxi. Mr. Keene, New York's full of taxis. True, Mike. And every driver is required by law to keep a trip record. Ho, oh, ho. Oh. Yes, a police regulation. Every time a driver makes a trip, he must keep a record of when and where it started, the number of his passengers, at when and where it ended. Sure, that's right. You always see them cabbies writing things down on a card. Well, it may be a long, slow process, but... If we were to check every major cab company in New York, we might pick up the trail of the old couple. <laughs> sure, but nobody's asked you to check, boss. That's just what intrigues my imagination. Mike, get your hat and coat. <coughs> Good sign, Mike. <coughs> Tony approves. <laughs> you know, I don't like the looks of it. Just because the old guy makes friends with the dog? He's hanging on to the dog because he's got a hunch of some kind. You know Keene's reputation? Maybe so, Harvey. Shut but... up. And do like I say. We keep tailing Keene night and day as long as he hangs on to that dog. Okay, okay. <laughs> Mr. 
That's right, Mr. Boyle. I'm looking for a cab that picked up an elderly couple at that address just a week ago today. Sorry, Mr. Keene. Wasn't any of our cabs. You say it was eight days ago today, Mr. Keene? That's right, Mr. Horton. Hmm. No, sir, it doesn't show on our records. Well, Mr. Keene, sir, it looks like the well-known needle in the well-known haystack. Mike, we mustn't weaken. Sooner or later, we'll find the right cab. Ah, but how do you know it'll be worth finding? How do we know there's any kind of a case? We've got to take the chance because... One second, Mike. What's up, boss? Look, they're across the street. Two men walking along. So what? Unless I'm very much mistaken, it's the same two men we ran into in the hallway the day we first started this search. Mr. Keene, you're right. Mike, they're shadowing us. Yes, sir. That's the way it looks. And that convinces me. There's a case, all right, and we must get to the bottom of it. Sure, Mr. Keene. I drove that old couple in this taxi right here. You're certain of that, driver? Oh, it checks all the way. The time of day, address where I picked them up, and a couple of other things happened to make me remember. Oh, tell us about them. Well, uh, I was cruising along that morning, and suddenly I hear the old gent shouting. Taxi! Taxi! I look over to the curb, and there's the old gent and the lady, a dog tow, and a couple of suitcases. I pull over to the curb, and they get in. Yes, sir, where to? Uh, Grand Central Station. Okay, chief. Uh, just a second, please. Uh, change your mind? Better make it 125th Street, the 125th Street Station. Okay. Uh, yes, Sam. I, I think that would be safer. Poor Alice, I'm sorry this had to happen. Oh, I'll be all right, Sandy. You don't look at all well. If only we'd had time to see the doctor again. Uh, now, please don't worry. That, that reminds me. We forgot to pick up your prescription at the drugstore. Driver, stop. We've got to go back. So, driver, you turned around and went to a drugstore? Uh, yes, Mr. Keene. That's when a trouble happened with the dog. The old gent let him try to trot along to the drugstore, but suddenly a cat came along <laughs> and off went the dog down a block and around the corner. <laughs> Look, Sam, Tony's gone. Now don't worry, Alice. He'll be back. Oh. Meanwhile, I'll pick up the prescription. Huh? He'll be back. But he never did come back. We waited and waited, and finally Mr. Godwin said... Alice, I hate to do this, but we'll have to go without Tony. Oh, no, Sam. We we can't. Tony's been almost like a child to us. But if we waste any more time here, it may cost us even more than Tony. The driver, get going. You got them to 125th Street all right? Yeah, but the wife was so upset, Mr. Keene, that when she started out of the cab, she went into a faint. Well, I'll be darned. I helped get her into the waiting room of the station to a woman on duty for the traveler's aid. What happened next? I don't know. A cop asked me to get my cab going. And that's the last you saw of them? Right. Hmm. Obviously, they were very frightened people. Uh, sure thing. Driver, if you're free to take a fare now... I am. All right, the 125th Street station, then. Come along, Mike. <laughs> While Mr. Keene and Mike Clancy continue the search, we pause for a moment. Every day, thousands and thousands of people are discovering they can get almost incredibly fast relief from the pains of simple headache and minor neuralgia with a remarkable product called Anison. You see, Anison is like a doctor's prescription, for it contains not just one, but a combination of medically tested and proven ingredients. That's one reason it brings such amazingly fast relief. Many have discovered this right in their own physician's or dentist's office, where they've been given an envelope containing two Anison tablets. Get Anison at your druggist next time you have a headache pain or the pains of neuralgia. Take only as directed. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. In handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. 
Now back to Mr. Keene and to Mike, his assistant, at the 125th Street Station. Yes, Miss Thompson, that's the old couple, all right. Tell me the rest, please. Well, as representative of the Traveler's Aid, I put myself at their disposal, Mr. Keene. I offered to get a doctor. And? She refused. She said all she needed was a spoonful of her medicine. A few minutes later, they got on their train and left. Did they tell you where they were going? The old gentleman was very vague. Indiana, he said. Indiana? And that's all. Boss, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike? Look, over there in the corner. Those two men again. Still trailing us. Miss Thompson, I have a very important request. If anybody else comes along to ask you about that old couple, unless it's the police, don't give any information. Why, I don't understand. It's still a puzzle to me, too. But obviously those two people are in some terrible danger. Please do as I ask. No, Harvey, that dame from the Travel's Aid wouldn't tell me a thing. Not even where Godwin and his wife went? Not a word. We're stymied. No, we're not. Not with a guy like Keen working for us. Who says he's working for us? He will, if we fix it right. And we won't have to pay him a cent. Listen to this. Easy there, Tony, easy. I'm doing my best to find them. Just be patient. Patient? Boss, you're up against a wall and you know it. I do know they've gone to Indiana, Mike. You found that out yesterday. Nothing since. Indiana. It's a very big place. Give it up, Mr. Keene, sir. Turn the dog over to the Animal Society. Mike, maybe I'm just a vain old man, but I hate to admit defeat. Yes, Susie? A letter just came for you, Mr. Keene. Special delivery. Thank you, Susie. Very well, Mr. Keene. Maybe the Godwins have children out in Indiana. Maybe they... Well, I'll read this letter. Hmm. Hmm. Mike, this is very interesting. What's up? I'll read it to you. Dear Mr. Keene, I'm an old friend of the Godwins. I'm told by their neighbor that you were asking about them. Don't worry. They are safe and sound. Sam Godwin is a retired trainer of racehorses. Oh, a trainer. And he and his wife have gone off to visit some friends on a training farm. If you don't mind keeping the dog, they'll pay you all the expense when they come back. It's signed, Arthur Ross. Boss, that letter is a phony. Why? Well, if the friend knew that they were on vacation, how would he happen to drop in at the house and find out you were investigating? That's a good point, Mike. The next question, why was this letter sent to me? Why, sure, plain as day. The man who wrote it wants to steer you off from looking for the Godwins. He wants to make you give up the search. Oh, well, Mike, I've got another theory, just the opposite. Well, what do you mean? This letter was written to spur us on. What? The writer knew it would sound fishy. Knew it would make me worry even more. Also, he went out of his way to give us a clue that may help find the Godwins. Well, you mean that... This mention that Godwin is a trainer of racehorses. Since we know the Godwins went to Indiana, as the writer probably does not, that narrows down the search. You see, there are any number of obscure little half-mile tracks out in Indiana. And Sam Godwin may have gone out there to work at his trade, in a place his enemies mightn't think of looking. Ah, but still, why would these enemies want to put you on the trail? Why? So that I'll do their work for them. So that I'll act as their bloodhound. Oh, well, that means that if we find the Godwins, so will their enemies. Probably. Those two gorillas who have been shadowing us day and night, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike. To go on with the search now is a dangerous risk. But we are going to take that risk. Steady, steady there, Lightning. This gentleman wants to talk to us. Mr. Williams, if you'd rather I came back after the race... No, no, it's My all name right. is Keene. I'm an investigator from New York. Oh, yes. I'm trying to locate a trainer by the name of Sam Godwin. I wonder if you know him. Sam Godwin? Oh, sure. Yeah, he's old, but he's one of the best men in the business. Oh. Have you run into him by any chance? <laughs> well, you see, Godwin's a big shot, Mr. Keene. Uh, you wouldn't find him around a dinky half-mile track like this. Not here. Well, uh, are there any other race meetings going on in the state? 
Yes, there's a small one over here at Haverford. Then there's the spring carnival, carnival over at uh, Beresford. But I don't think that you'll find it. Well, thank you, Mr. Williams. I'll have to check that for myself. Yeah, Mike, this must be the office. Okay, boss. I knock. Come in. Yes, gentlemen? I'm told you're in charge of the racing program at the carnival. Yes, sir. You want to make some entries? No, I... Just want to have a little talk with you, Sam Godwin. You've made a mistake. My name isn't Godwin. I'm told otherwise. But just to prove it, Mike, go back to the taxi outside. Uh, yes, sir, I will. And just open the door of the cab. <laughs> yes, sir, I get it. Who are you? What do you want? I think I can explain most quickly by showing you my card. Have a look. Your name is... Oh, you're the famous investigator. <laughs> Tony, old boy! Tony, we thought you were gone for good. Poor fellow. I think this proves my point. You are Sam Godwin. How did you ever find Tony, Mr. Keene? And what brought you here? I won't go into that right now. I'll tell you only this. You're in danger. I... I know. Even more than you suspect. I may be able to help you, but only if you'll trust me. Come ahead. Tell me what the trouble is. Mr. Keene, I... All right. I'm sick of running away. I might as well tell you. Up to last year, I worked at the biggest tracks. I minded my own business, which was to produce winners. Then last year, just before one of the biggest races, two men came to see me at my hotel. They introduced themselves. My name's Harvey. This is Mr. Skinner. I'm pleased to meet you. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Godwin, we think you're the best racing trainer in this country. Well, thanks for the compliment, but in fact... With the way you've been handling uh, Lady Checkers, we don't see how she can lose tomorrow. She'll win by ten lengths. That's just what we don't want her to do. What? Cards on the table. We represent a gambling syndicate. It's worth more to us if Lady Checkers loses. We'll pay you $5,000 if you fix it. Get out of here. We can go up to $10,000. I never threw a race in my life. Get out. $15,000. Just a little shot of dope before the race to slow her up. What do you say? I'm sending for the police. Take your hands off that phone and listen. You got a sick wife, Hubbard. She can't stand excitement. Suppose uh, you start getting beat up every now and then. You can't do that. Sure we can. Or else we make you a present of $15,000. How about it? Which is it? Make up your mind, Godwin. Well, Mr. Godwin, what did you decide? I said yes, Mr. Keene, to stall them off. I wanted to tell the police, but I didn't see how I could prove it. And my wife is a very sick woman, in a heart condition. Yes, I know. But I never harmed an animal in my life. Well, one hour before the race, my wife and I packed up and ran away. Lady Checkers won. It cost the gamblers a fortune. And they've been after you ever since? They trailed me from town to town. I had to give up my work. We lived in New York on our savings. Then somebody tipped me off they were looking for me in New York, so again it meant packing up and running. We were hoping that this time... One moment, Mr. Godwin. Uh, what's up? Come over here. Look through this window. Heavens above. Those two men lounging by the gate. Skinner and Harvey, they found me again. You can blame me for that. You? While I was following you, they were following me. Now I am a goner with my wife sick at the hotel alone all day. One minute. Don't lose your nerve, Sam Godwin. But what can I do, Mr. Keene? You can take the bull by the horns. How? How? Listen carefully. Tonight, Mike Clancy and I are going to the station to take the night train out of here. The moment we're gone, I know you'll have a visit from those two men. And here is the only thing to do. Poor Alice. Having quite a bit of pain, aren't you? No, don't try to talk, dear. That sleeping powder should be working any minute now, and you'll be dozing off. That's it. Just relax. Sleep. That's it. Sleep. Uh, one second, please. It's you. 
You? Hello, Godwin. Surprised to see us? We're coming inside. No, no, you can't. My wife's sick. She just dozed off. So bad. Let's go downstairs to the lobby. Have ten witnesses around? No, we're coming inside. Please, my wife has a bad heart. You should have thought of that before. Before you gave us the double cross. What What do you want of me? You want our dough back. The money we lost in the race you didn't throw. You know I haven't got that kind of money. We got a proposition. What did you tell your owners when you walked out on your last job? That I had to take my wife to a rest home. So you still stand all right with your old stable and all the big stables, huh? Yes, I've had a couple of good offers lately. That's what we're getting to. You're going to take one of those offers. You're going back to the big time. To work for us. For you. When we want your horse to win, he wins. When we want him to lose, he loses. You work for us. And you keep on working for us till we get back our dough. And something more. No, I can't. I can't do it. Let's ask your wife what she thinks. No, don't wake her. She had another heart attack today. And she'll have a whole lot more if you don't get wise. Skinner, wake her up. Please, I beg you. yo -ho! Wake up, Mrs. Godwin. Wake up. <sighs> Shake her, Skinner. Okay, wake up, Mrs. Godwin. Don't touch me. Hands up, both of you. What? I'll what? Reach you. for the ceiling. I've got you covered. Hey, it's that guy King. Yes, my friends, and looking a little strange in this nightcap and nightgown. I didn't leave town after all. I hopped off the first car of the train just as soon as it cleared the station. Well, I'll be... Mrs. Godwin, fortunately, is in another room of the hotel with Tony, her dog, to take care of her. I decided to take her place here in bed just long enough to listen and get the evidence that will send you both to prison for ten years. Ten years? Yes, for attempted extortion. All right, Mr. Godwin, phone the police. And then you can help me out of this nightgown. Listen next week at the same time as Mr. Keene brings us The Case of the Little Black Book. The main job of a toothpaste is to help your brush clean your teeth. Isn't that correct? We honestly believe that Colonel's toothpaste will help clean and polish teeth more effectively, safely, beautifully. And here's the reason. Colonos is a high-polishing toothpaste, especially designed to help clean and polish teeth with the greatest possible effectiveness, consistent with safety. That's why you can compare the action of Colonos to a jeweler's polish, removing tarnish from precious silver. Quickly, gently, it helps take away clouding surface film, leaves your teeth really clean, looking their best. Just run your tongue over your teeth and you'll feel the difference. Look in the mirror and you'll see the difference. So start each day the Colonos way, and let Colonos toothpaste help you keep smiling. That winning, successful smile that pays big dividends in business and social life. Ask your druggist for Colonos, a high-polishing toothpaste tonight. That's spelled K-O-L-Y-N-O-S. Colonos toothpaste. <laughs> You've been listening to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on the air every Thursday, 7.30 to 8 Eastern Wartime over this network. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday night when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of the little black book. This is Larry Elliott saying good night to the makers of Colonel's Toothpaste and inviting you to listen to Friday on Broadway at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Wartime over this network tomorrow night. <laughs> Famous no-rubbing Aero Wax gives you beautifully waxed, shining floors in six to nine minutes flat and at the cost of only a few pennies per room. Think of it. It's quick, easy, economical. Just apply Aero Wax. It dries to a marvelous luster. Cuts out two-thirds of your scrubbing. A full pint costs only 25 cents. Get Aero Wax. A-E-R-O-W-A-X. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.